Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. Today's topic is going to be one world order or salvation. The most important thing in your life has got to be what you will be doing for all eternity. That's your salvation. That's got to be the most important uh, thought that you would have in your mind. Most important goal is what you will be doing for all eternity. Your salvation has got to be number one. And my, my uh, co-host today, Dave Gall- Gallus. Welcome to the program, Dave. Thank you, Meyer. It's a happy, pleasure. Happy to have you here. Thank you. Uh, we'll be talking about this one world order or salvation. And uh, we're going to go to the Bible. But before we go to the Bible, we're going to offer you two very, very important booklets. The first is, what kind of faith is required for salvation? And the second booklet is, what do you mean salvation? What is salvation all about? Many people think they know, they're pretty sure they know, but you can order these booklets by just calling. They're free. There's no cost, there's no obligation. We never ask the public for money. All you need to do is call us at area code 575-650-7359. And we'll send them out to you. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to call us. We'll be happy to answer any questions. So let's get started today. We're looking at Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Now, I'll read that from the King James Version. And it says here in verse 8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So I was wondering about the fearful. I was wondering, why fearful? Aren't people, isn't that a, uh, a reaction? Isn't that a, an emotion? Suppose somebody came in to your church or synagogue and started firing. Would you not be fearful? Would you not go under, duck underneath the pews? Would you look for cover? Would you be concerned, really fearful? Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's a natural reaction. Yeah, it's a natural reaction. So why would the fearful be put in with murderers and sorcerers and idolaters and all uh, facing the second death. That's, that's one question that we're going to answer today. So we're going to look at three young men who were not fearful. And we'll find it in Daniel chapter 3. Dave, I'd like you to read uh, Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 Uh, And then 4 to 7. Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. This is a pretty big idol. Yeah, a cubit is about a... a, uh, the distance between the tip of your finger and your elbow, about 18 inches. It's a foot and and a half foot and a half. So, so you're talking about a 70, 80 foot structure. Yeah, Holy exactly. Smoke. Okay. And he set this idol up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. 
And then I'll go to four. Then a herald, then a herald cried aloud, to you as it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at this time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in, sympath- in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Okay, now let's go drop down to verse 12 to 15. Would you read that? Verse 12. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. These are the young men men you were talking about. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. So these were schemers that didn't like these young men. And they're going to the king and telling them that these men won't bow down. They do not serve your gods or worship your golden image, which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king, Nebuchadnezzar, and he spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you are ready at the time to hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Wow. That, that was between a rock and a hard place. They were between a rock and a hard place. Now, they had uh, government jobs. They were high up in the government. They had terrific jobs, uh, uh, the best of working conditions. You could have the best food, the best wines, and, uh, and all. They had a future there. Now, what future would they have going into a, a burning, fiery furnace and being all burned up? Not much future at all. No. They're dead. Exactly. So read on and let's see what happens to them as you read on. You want me to continue on, uh, Daniel? Yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this manner. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand. (laughs) O king, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. Wow. They're going going to their death. Exactly. So they're facing death. death. They're facing death. Wow. All right, what happened now? Next. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So I guess he was willing to give them a chance. He, gave, he was willing they, to give them a chance. They told him hands down, no, nope, we're not doing that. All right. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men, I guess these were soldiers, of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The soldiers were burned up. Right, exactly. And they didn't even go in the furnace. They no, were just close to it. That, that's right. The flames came out and, and killed them. Wow. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look, he answered, 
I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Is that Jesus? That was Jesus. And they're walking around in the fire. And they're walking around in the fire. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Wow. God is able to save you and me uh, when, when, when we're between a rock and a hard place. Wow. You know, there's nothing that God can't do. He could perform any miracle. But talk about faith. These guys were goners. They were goners. If they didn't have faith, that was it. Okay, there's situations coming up very similar to what happened back then in Daniel's time. We're going to look at it in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Would you read, Dave, would you read Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 to 18? Revelation 13, chapter 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it into worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Now I have a question about the beast, the, the right. first beast and the, the, uh, the beast that is now coming. Okay. So who are the beasts? Okay, these are governments. A beast is either a government or it could be the Antichrist himself. Okay. Okay. Now, back in the Roman times, the Roman government uh, in 476 A.D., that's 476 years after Christ, right. they were invaded by the uh, Ostrogoths, the, uh, the uh, various Vandals came by, and, and tore Rome apart. So this was the, the Roman Empire the was Roman invaded Empire, from the north by European... By European armies. Ah. And they fought and they conquered the Romans, uh, Roman government. Okay, and that's the first... they were piece. out of business. So they were out of business from 476 on to the time of, uh, of the... the uh, one of the German kings took over and uh, reinstalled the government again. Okay, uh, okay. I'll think of his name as we well, go Well, the, the, German, the Germans were one of those Goths or Ostrogoths that came down from the north, right? Yes, exactly. And, and conquered the Roman Empire. Charlemagne. Charlemagne, the oh time, yes. The time of Charlemagne came back and the Roman uh, government came back again. Okay. And this Roman form of government is with us today. It's, it, it's in the shape of a, of a new world order oh, I've that's heard coming about this. along. I've heard about this. So we're going to learn more as we go along about this new world order. Folks, make sure that you see the program each week because we may be talking about this new world order next week along with our, our program. Okay. You want me to continue? Yes, please. Okay. So... And he exercises, this is the beast, all the authority of the first beast in his president, at present and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. So the wound was when the northern armies came down and conquered the Roman Empire. So the sword, the injury to the first beast, was the sword of Charlemagne or whoever conquered them. Yeah. Conquered the first beast. Well, he didn't conquer it. He, he damaged the first beast. Exactly. Okay. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, 
for it is the number of man. His number is 666. So he's going to have a mark on his hand or some on his... kind of a mark or some kind of chip, something like uh, that's right, going to right. take place. We don't know exactly, but we're going to explain it once we come back from the break. So we're going to take a short break after this short message. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. We'll explain you the mark a six, six, six. to you to customize your kitchen and bathroom with beautiful countertops and cabinets. Find out more at horizongranite.com. Call us at 575-650-3180. Horizon Granite is here. It's here. Make yourself a beautiful home. Hi, welcome to Okazuri. It's our happy hour sushi fest. We placed our top sushi rolls on special from four to six dollars. And our ice cold draft beer is only two fifty. Have a California roll, banderito roll. Sit at the floating sushi bar, and the kids eat for only two dollars. From two to five, Monday through Thursday, located on University in the Pan Am Plaza. It's our happy hour sushi fest. Welcome back to the program. Folks, if you tuned in late, our, our subject today is One World Government or Salvation, which, with a question mark. And we, we finished up the earlier part of the program explaining if, if any man does not receive the mark of the beast in his right hand or his forehead, it's the number of a man. It's six, six, six. I don't know how it's going to, how it's going to work out. Whether it's going to be a chip or a tattoo or whatever it's going to be, but he can't buy or sell, so he can't work. And Dave, if he can't work, how's he going to, how's he going to provide for his family? How's he going to feed his family if he can't work? Well, That's was, a tough one, isn't I it? I would think you have to grow your own food or hunt your own food or, I don't know, uh, water. Well, we're going to explain that as we go along here. And, uh, but Dave, I want you to read Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 to 11, about the punishment that whoever receives that mark, that they're going to be punished by God. And this is severe. It's a severe punishment, Dave. But I, I do have a question first. Yeah. Uh, so a person <clears throat> that wants to <clears throat> wants to survive, excuse me, <clears throat> a person that wants to survive has to do business with the devil, who is the beast. Right. Uh, if he doesn't have this tattoo or mark on his forehead or on his hand, he's not dealing in any commerce whatsoever with the power, the world power, the exactly. world government. 
Exactly. So this, now we're going to talk about what the punishment is if we do take that mark onto our forehead or our hand by disregarding God. Exactly. Okay. Number nine. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his head hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with the fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That's Jesus? Yes. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Wow. Just imagine you're at the white throne judgment. Just imagine this, Dave. You're at the white throne judgment, and your name is not found written in the book of life. And, you're, and God is judging you. And you're ready to be thrown into the lake of fire. And you tell God, well, well God, I had, to, I had to accept that mark. I had to feed my family. I had to work. I had to pay the mortgage. I had to pay the car loans. I had to do this and I had to do that. Is God going to buy that Is excuse? God going to buy that when one angel is reaching under your arms and another angel has got your both feet and they're swinging you into the lake of, that burns with fire, the, the lake of fire. Doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good. Would no. you? Let me ask you something, Dave. Would you trade your head for eternal life? Of course. Okay, so you would put your head down on the chopping block and you would have eternal life. You would rule with Jesus Christ for 1,000 years to start out with. Well, that's where faith comes into play. And those three young men, those authorities in Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had the faith. They were willing to lose their head or their bodies for eternal salvation. So, you know, it, it's a, it would be a tough call when you're near the guillotine, but if you have faith, you'll have eternal life. So, absolutely, it's worth it. Well, sure. Uh, let, let's go to uh, uh, Joshua chapter 1. Let's find out how we, we could receive power to uh, be able to uh, overcome this. Joshua yeah. chapter 1, verses 6 to 9, and read verse 18. Okay, Joshua 1, 6. Be strong and have good courage. Well, that's, that's where faith comes in. For to his people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to the fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not be departed from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. I have not commanded you. No, have I not commanded you? Be strong and have good courage. See, tell He said it two or three times. Two or three times. Do not be afraid. Okay, look at Joshua chapter 2, verses 10 to 12. 2, 10 through 12. Joshua 2, 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Shion and Og, Shihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted, Neither did they remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now therefore I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token. Yeah, that was Rahab the harlot. 
Oh. And they, the two spies came to her. She hid them up on the roof under the, under oh, yes. the flax. Oh, yes. And then the, they came in. They wanted to know where those two men were. And she said, well, they went that away. Oh. Uh, when they actually went that way. Yeah, they were on the roof the whole time. Uh, and then they came down and they went the opposite oh, okay. direction. Oh, okay. And, uh, and she, w she and her family were saved. Did you know that Rahab the harlot is in the genealogy of Jesus Christ? No, I didn't yeah, know that. She's, wow. in, she's in the genealogy wow. of Jesus Christ. Fantastic. That's Let's something. look at 2 Timothy chapter 1. In verse 7, would you read that for us? Second Timothy, uh, okay. Second Timothy, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Yeah, we don't have the spirit of fear. Now, in your uh, New King James, would you read uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8? It, it's, it's rendered a little differently. Yeah, I noticed that. Mayan says, but the cowardly, unbelieving. Now, you said fearful. Fearful. It cowardly, says fearful, fearful in the old King James, and the new King James says, uh, says uh, that uh, cowardly. Well, that, it kind of makes sense because makes sense. if Shadmac, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were facing a fire... I would think I'd be fearful. Exactly. Not cowardly, just fearful. Exactly. If, I mean, yeah. yeah, that's scary. That's scary. So. Well, you know, David fought against Goliath. It, it was a boy fighting against a battle tank. Goliath was, all, was, was a giant. He was covered from armor from head to toe. He had a little space where he could see out of his armor. Right. And David was slinging that stone. He had no armor. He, and finally, he killed Goliath and cut his head off. Wow. Well, we're coming to the end of the program. Folks, please call us with what kind of faith is required for salvation. You must read this booklet. It's a must read along with the companion booklet, What Do You Mean? salvation. Our phone number is 575-650-7359. These are free. There's no cost. There's no obligation. We never ask the public for money. Call us and we'll be happy to send them out to you. Dave, you have a... Yeah, I have a publication as well. I'm one of the co-owners and staff writers for Issachar. And it's Understanding the Times, Problems, and proposed, proposed Solutions of the Day. I'll be glad to send you a free copy of this publication if you call me at 856-952-7343. Very good read, and we also welcome people to write in. Okay, Dave and myself wish you well. We wish you a, a, a great week. Come back and see us next week. We'll finish up with the program. We'll do part two. See you then. You have been listening to What is Truth? with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.